Welcome back to our introductory tutorial series on the Canon EOS R camera and its dedicated RF lenses. I'm Rudy Winston with Canon USA, and in this episode, we'll look at two special controls we've never had on EOS cameras before. The control ring on RF lenses and on the optional Canon control ring lens mount adapter EF to EOS R and the multi-function bar on the back of the EOS R camera body. You'll see a control ring on every Canon RF lens. It's an additional ring and doesn't replace the conventional manual focus and zoom rings we've seen for decades on camera lenses. The control ring gives you instant exposure adjustment with your left hand. You can turn the ring to change lens aperture, shutter speed, ISO, or exposure compensation. This ring frees your right hand to perform other tasks, like firing the shutter or starting and stopping video recording. You can feel the soft click stops in the control ring as you rotate it. These clicks will make a slight audible sound as you rotate the ring. For critical video shooters concerned about the possibility of recording this sound, Canon service technicians can modify your RF lens and remove the click stops for a fee. The control ring is one of many customizable controls on the EOS R camera. In fact, you first have to activate it in the camera's custom functions menu. Out of the box, the EOS R camera is set for the control ring to be disabled. You can turn it, but it has no effect. To get started, go to the EOS R camera's menu, and in the orange colored custom functions area, go to the fourth menu screen and select Customize dials. Three dials can be modified here. The control ring is the round icon at the bottom of the menu screen. Highlight it and press set. The options now appear on screen. The choices with the downward arrow prevent inadvertent operation. With these, you have to press the shutter button halfway down as you rotate the ring to alter exposure settings. The options without the arrow icon mean that any time the camera is awake, rotating the control ring immediately changes that particular exposure setting. Another option you have on the previous Custom Functions menu screen is to change the direction of the control ring's rotation if you find the default rotation to be counterintuitive for you. If you normally shoot in an auto exposure mode, Try using the control ring on RF lenses for exposure compensation. It's a quick and easy way to make adjustments and you can see the impact of any changes right in the viewfinder or on the LCD monitor. It's your choice whether to add the safeguard of first pressing the shutter button halfway or allow unfettered access to the ring's adjustments anytime it's rotated with the camera awake. And remember, if you attach a Canon EF or EFS lens with the optional control ring mount adapter EF to EOS R, the same menu settings apply to the adapter's ring as well. The second control I want to introduce you to is the multi-function bar on the back of the EOS R camera. It's a totally new touch-sensitive control, and it's absolutely silent. You can tap either end to immediately call up a specific feature, or swipe your thumb along its length to run through a series of changes or setting options. You define what features it brings up in the Custom Functions menu. The bar can be active anytime the camera is awake, or you can enable a safety lock. This is especially useful if you find you touch the bar accidentally. With the safety lock, the bar is temporarily available. You first have to touch and hold your thumb over its left side for about a full second, and you'll see a progress bar appear on screen followed by the word on. At that point, you can swipe or tap either end. After about 10 seconds of inactivity, the safety lock disables the multifunction bar. Yet another option is to activate the full cover setting. With this menu choice active, if you cover the entire bar with your thumb for one full second, the bar's display setting screen will appear, so you can make rapid changes to what the bar does. 
And you can enter separate commands for what it will do during shooting and different ones for scrolling through images or video during playback. Like the control ring, the factory default setting is that the multifunction bar is disabled and you have to go into the camera's custom functions menu to activate it. On the fourth menu screen, there is a separate line item for customize MFN bar. A few potential examples of what's possible with the multifunction bar. Use it as a shortcut for AF functions. Slide your thumb along its length to change AF method from AF on a small area to a larger one, or vice versa. Tap one end to instantly call up a feature like eye detection AF and toggle it on or off. And the opposite end for something like instantly calling up touch and drag AF or changing the frame size of a single AF point. Assign control for the camera's new flexible priority shooting mode to the bar. Slide along the bar to select a setting to change. Tap one end to restore everything to totally automatic operation and the other to revert just the active value like shutter speed only back to automatic control. Use it as a shortcut for ISO control. Swipe your thumb to change ISO over the entire available ISO range and see it on the LCD monitor or in your viewfinder. Assign one end to instantly call up a favorite ISO setting you use frequently and the other to instantly revert to auto ISO. Another example is you can use it to quickly change white balance settings. A video user can slide his or her thumb along the bar to change manual audio levels or headphone volume. Then tap one end to toggle manual focus peaking on and off and assign something like a histogram display or electronic level on screen to toggle on and off with a tap at the opposite end. These are just a few examples of how you can use the multifunction bar especially with many of the typical camera buttons now relegated to on-screen locations. It's another quick method to call up and change features you work frequently with.